Okay, question number nine, part A from Pure Mathematics 3, the sample assessment paper for the international A-level. Um, here we have an identity that we need to prove. Say that, prove that the secant of 2a plus the tangent of 2a is equal to cosine a plus sine a over cosine a minus sine a. Okay, now to prove that, um, first of all, what we should try and do, what I would try and do, is to try and convert the secant and the tangent into cosines and sines. And I know that secant of 2a, now the secant of an angle is the reciprocal function for the cosine of the same angle. And we can see from the third letter, secant, the third letter is a C, so that's reciprocal of cosine. That's one way to remember it. So the cosine, uh, this is like 1 over the cosine of 2a. And the tangent of 2a, well, the tangent of an angle is equal to, as one of the identities that you should know, the basic identities, the tangent of an angle is equal to the sine of the angle over the cosine of that same angle. So that means this is the same as saying the sine of 2a over the cosine of 2a. Now, when you're dealing with these identities, sometimes it's not, you can't see the whole picture in front of you in the beginning, all right? You don't see how am I going to get from here to there. You don't see the whole, you know, the whole way, the whole, all the steps of how to get there. However, what you can do is you can think of certain things. Like for example, now once, the, I mean, the only thing we could really do here is to change them in ter terms of sine and cosine because these are all sines and cosines. Now, secondly, what we can do is say, okay, this is one term. It's like one fraction, and these are two separate terms. So if we combine these two into one fraction. Okay, make them under con as a common denominator. Well, they already have the they already have a common denominator, which is cosine two a. So just express it as cosine two a, and on top you have one plus sine of two a. Okay, so we've just expressed them as one fraction. Okay, one term. Um, we're kind of like getting closer to this type of uh, form that it's in. Now the other thing you notice is that. These are single angles here, and here we have double angles. So if we use our double angle formulae identity, which we should know, this, these two, these are not given to you actually. So you've got sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cosine a. Okay, and the cosine of 2a, okay, one of them is cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Now, if you forgot these identities here, you can derive them from the formula sheet that's given to you. Okay, so if you look in your formula sheet for P3, you will find this particular part where you have this given to you. So you could use this to derive both of these. So for example here, um, if you want to derive sine of 2a, you can make this as sine of a plus a. Okay, if you do the sine of a plus a, that's the sine of 2a, right? So that gives you the sine of a times the cosine of a plus the cosine of a times the sine of a, which is 2 sine a cosine a. Okay, and for this one, cosine of 2a, okay, this you can make this as a cosine of a plus a. All right, in which case you'll get cosine a cosine a, and you'll have a minus, if there's a plus here, there's a minus here, sine a, sine a. So you'll end up with cosine squared a minus sine squared a. So that's how you can derive these two from the formula sheet given if you forget them. Anyway, so what I can now do is change these into single angles. Okay, so I have, this is going to be one plus two sine A cosine A. And here you're gonna have cosine squared A minus sine squared A. All right, so we're getting a bit closer Except here we don't have the squares on them, okay? Here you do have the denominator. Now what you'll notice here is the denominator is actually the same as cosine a minus, cosine a plus sine a times cosine a minus sine a, because this is like a difference of squares. So you could, I'm just going to uh, just deal with the denominator first. You could write this as cosine a plus sine a times cosine a minus sine a. Okay, now this will be a little clue to you because 
you see you have cosine a minus sine a and cosine a plus sine a um, you know on next to it here so basically what we can see is that this cosine a plus sine a must have got cancelled out with something in the numerator to be leaving you with this so if you think about what this is going to be right you should think that this will this should have a cosine a plus sine a on top okay which got cancelled out to leave you with cosine a minus sine a now how does that work well what you should realize is also something important and that is that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle will always give you 1. So I can replace this 1 with sine squared a plus cosine squared a then I've got my plus 2 sine a cosine a. Now this here is actually a perfect square. If you rewrite it in in this format, if I write it as uh, cosine squared a plus 2 sine a cosine a plus sine squared a okay that's like a perfect square okay and underneath we already took this difference of squares and written in this form cosine a plus sine a times cosine a minus sine a so the, the numerator can be factorized as a perfect square you have basically cosine a plus sine a squared okay if you square that you're going to get cosine squared a and you're going to have two times cosine a times sine a and you're going to have sine squared a but i'll just write it as two separate brackets because i can see that we're going to have to cancel out one of those factors to leave us with what we're supposed to be left with so we have here cosine a plus sine a I'm trying to be as neat as i can here times cosine a minus sine a and these cancel out and you're left with what we are supposed to show that you've got cosine a plus sine a let me just over cosine a minus sine a and that's exactly what we had to prove okay and this is as required okay and there we have the answer to part a okay so there's the answer to part a now part b it's saying hence solve for theta between 0 and 2 pi the equation sec 2 theta plus tan 2 theta equals a half giving you answers to three decimal places okay so this is going to be in terms of pi so this is going to be in terms of radians so now in order to do this okay we have to use the result that we found before or which they actually gave us so because they already gave us the result we can just quote it straight away so sec 2 theta plus tan 2 theta can be expressed as cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta cosine theta minus sine theta and that's equal to a half that's using the result that we got before so how do we deal with this okay let's multiply both sides by 2 and cosine theta minus sine theta basically cross multiplying here we'll have 2 times cosine theta plus 2 times sine theta is equal to cosine theta minus sine theta now we got rid of the fractions we can try to solve what I would do here is I would bring the cosine thetas and sine thetas together on the same side. So here I am going to have uh, 
2 cosine theta minus cosine theta, which is cosine theta. And I'll have 2 sine theta plus sine theta, which is plus 3 sine theta equals 0. Now, if I divide both sides of this equation by cosine theta, if I divide by cosine theta, why am I dividing by cosine theta? Because I know that this will cancel out leaving you with 1, and you're left with a tan theta. And here you're going to have 0. 0 divided by cosine theta is 0. So we have 1 plus 3 tan theta is equal to 0. So we can say tan theta is equal to minus 1 over 3. So now I have to solve this equation between 0 and 2 pi. Between 0 and and 2 pi, so my answer has to be in radians. Okay, that has just the equals, that doesn't have the equal sign with it. I don't think it will make much of a difference here, but you should be careful about that in some cases. So tan theta equals minus one third, so I need to find the angles between 0 and 2 pi for which that is true, and my answer to three decimal places. So let's um, make sure that we are in radian mode first. Okay, so that's now in radian mode. So I'm going to put inverse tan of minus one third. Okay, minus one third. And that gives us in radians negative 0 0.32175. Okay, so theta equals, um, I'm just going to save this as a. So I have it saved, but um, 0 0.32175 minus, so theta equals minus 0 0.32715. Let me just make sure of that. 32175. Sorry about that. So you've got to be careful. Of course, when you close, you, you have your calculators open next to you, so it's a bit easier. I mean, I could copy the screen just to be sure. I think I'll do that. Right. I'll just click on this and say capture screen and paste. Okay. Then I can see in front of me. Okay, that's better. I'm just going to have minus 0 0.32175 dot 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 okay so that's the angle that the calculator gives us okay now what I want to do now is I want to find the angles that we need in our range now this this angle is not in our range okay this angle is not in our range because we want to go from 0 to 2 pi so it has to be in our range now basically what's happened is the calculator has given us um, this angle over here, minus 0 0.32, where it's negative, it's given us an angle on this side here. It's going to give us a closer to zero. That's what it's given us, because our angles are where tangent is negative, okay? So it's given us an angle where the cosine is positive, positive and the sine is positive. The tan is positive in these two quadrants, ASTC. So it's given us this angle. Now we need to find the angles between zero and 360 um, 2 pi 0 and 2 pi which is like 0 360 so I need to find what this angle is okay and I also need to find what this angle is okay so basically for tan curve it's really simple all you need to do for the tangent all you need to do is keep adding 180 degrees until you're out of the range um, in this case, subtracting 180 will take us further out of the range because we're already starting with something negative. So if I, if I add 180 to this, you can see I'll end up with the angle over here. Okay, so if I add 180, which is pi radians, so I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to add pi. And it will give me 2.81984. 2 2.81984. 2 oops. Two point eight one nine eight four nine eight four. 
Okay, that's the solution in our range. Okay, and we're also going to have um, 180 more than this as well. So take this angle we got just now and add another 180 to it. You're going to get this angle, which is the other angle that we need. So if you add pi to this, if you add pi to this, we get 5.96143. 5.96143. So 5.96143. 5.96143. Okay, so there we have um, the two angles in our range between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, between 0 and 2 pi, we have these two angles in our range, and we just have to round them to three decimal places as they asked us to. So this gives you 2.819. That was a 1, right? I think that was a one. Is it a nine eight? I can't remember. Oops. <laughs> Let's just go back. Sorry about this. Take away pi from this. So I should write clearly. That's two point eight one nine eight. That's an eight there. Yes, that's an eight. Let me write it clearly. You should always write clearly. Sometimes this pen starts lagging, so it doesn't help. So that's a nine eight four. So when I round it to three decimal places. Okay, that 9 becomes a 10, so you end up with 2.820. And here, three decimal places will be 5.961. So those are the two angles, or the two solutions to this equation. Okay, three decimal places, that's right. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 9, I think it is. Is it number 9? Yes.